text used in Judges 13, when the angel of the Lord says to someone, why do you ask my name? It's too wonderful. What they mean is, more accurately, it's beyond your understanding. You couldn't comprehend my name. We worship a saviour who is wonderful, who is beyond our comprehension. Actually, I'm not sure I want to worship someone who I could understand, someone who I can put in a box and neatly explain. I have a God and saviour who is so big, so amazing, so wonderful and beyond my capacity to understand him. For me, that God would humble himself. First of all, to become a human baby, but then to be prepared to die on a cross. For me and for you, that's beyond my understanding. That is beyond my comprehension. It is too wonderful. So yes, Jesus is wonderful. But he's also counsellor. Now, today we talk a lot about counsellors. I was hoping this morning to be interviewing um, Carol Hayward, who's a member of our congregation. Um, sadly, she can't be with us. But she's a wonderful example of um, someone. She's actually a psychotherapist rather than a counsellor. But she's a wonderful example of someone who... Um, inhabits that role as a human being and yet is also a person of faith and it's wonderful to see the work and the way that God works through her. People like Carol and others that we will know do wonderful things to support us um, both in crises and in difficult times and never before I think have we needed them so much in our society. But actually, when the Jews heard the word counsellor, that would have meant something quite different to them. In the Bible, the word counsellor, particularly in the Old Testament, tends to be reserved for kings and for prophets or even for God himself. Um, in all three persons of the Trinity, you will find the word counsellor used in the New Testament, more commonly for the Holy Spirit, um, but for also for Jesus, and in the Old Testament, more often for God. In Micah, for instance, we see that word used. Why do you now cry aloud? Have you no king? Has your counsellor died? In Isaiah 28, verse 29, the Lord Almighty, wonderful in counsel and magnificent in wisdom. Now, we have some wonderful counsellors around, and we are grateful for them. But this is a reminder that we, each of us, have a personal counsellor in Jesus. One who knows us so intimately that he knows us actually better than we know ourselves. I wonder what you think makes a good counsellor. What qualities would you want to see in someone who you were going to go to for counsel? I popped down a few of my own ideas. A great listener. Someone who understands what I'm trying to communicate. Someone with empathy. Someone who doesn't judge me. And someone who speaks the truth but in love. Who am I describing? Jesus. Jesus is that person. He listens. Often wondering when is he going to get a word in edgeway sometimes with my prayers, I think. But he listens to us. He understands us. He created us after all. He created our inmost being. He knows us. He has compassion upon us. A number of times in the Gospels, you read, Jesus looked on them and loved them. He has compassion upon us. And compassion literally means to suffer with. He knows what we're going through. He understands what we're going through. Someone who 
Sometimes we pray things, don't we? And we think, well, why didn't God answer that? And I think it's usually because Jesus knows better what I need than what I think I need. I'll give you an example. Have you ever prayed for patience? I used to pray this a lot when my boys were little and driving me nuts. I would pray, Jesus, give me patience. Do you know what? Jesus never answered that prayer. Usually, straight after that, my boys would be completely manic and I'd be tearing my hair out. Now, when I look back at that, I realize actually I was praying the wrong prayer. That actually what I needed to do was learn to depend upon Jesus in that situation. And what I was wanting was the quick fix. Just give me patience. I can sort it out. But he wanted to teach me to lean on him. Sometimes I pray for concentration. I don't know about you, particularly um, if I've had a, a busy day, and, um, but I want to pray, but I find it really difficult to concentrate. My thoughts are all over the place. Um, I'm thinking about what I'm going to cook for dinner or whatever. And I pray for concentration. Does it work? Not very often. And again, I think that's because actually Jesus says, not, that's not what you need. What you need is persistence. But sometimes I just want you to come, even with your scattered thoughts, even when it's hard to pray. In fact, more importantly, when it is hard to pray, come, just come with all those scattered thoughts and just come to me. Jesus gets to the heart of what I need not what I think I need. Because actually, he knows me better than I know myself. And one of the things I'm going to do in these video reflections is look at the way in which Jesus in the Gospels um, shows himself to be that wonderful counter. His encounters with individuals. Colossians says that in Jesus are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. He's the perfect counsellor because he knows us completely. He created us and he has that wisdom to guide us. Not only that, he knows what it's like to be a human being. That is the wonder of Christmas, isn't it? He knows what it's like to be human Hebrews 4, verses 15 to 16 says this, We do not have a high priest, that's Jesus, who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who was tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us approach the throne of grace. Grace, not judgment. Hear that. Let us approach the throne of grace with boldness as we have received so that we can receive mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. Mercy and grace is at the throne of Jesus Christ. And that's a wonderful place to be. And it's a wonderful Advent promise. Human counselors do a wonderful job. And Jesus can work through them and does work through them. Jesus is the ultimate counsellor. And by his Holy Spirit, he dwells within each one of us and is able to help us. And I believe he wants to help us, not just with those big crises, but in the small things of our lives as well. Never ever believe the devil's lie that Jesus is not interested in you and all you are going through. One of the things as I was preparing this talk today that Jesus put on my heart more than anything is how much he loves us and how much he just wants to have that intimate relationship with us so that your every day, the smallest needs we can bring to him. But this was a wonder to me, and I think I'd sort of, I've read it before, but it hadn't really impacted me. 
A couple of weeks ago, um, Chris was talking to us about um, John 17 and Jesus' prayer and how Jesus prayed for his disciples incredibly just as he was facing the cross. But he also prayed for us, for you and I, for his future disciples. But do you know what Jesus spends most of his time doing now? Praying. He's still praying for us. In Hebrews 7, verse 25, it says this, He is able, Jesus is able, for all time to save those who approach God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. Jesus is praying for you and I at the right hand of God. When I get slightly discouraged, and I do, when I've been praying for something for a long time and not seeing those answers, this verse has really inspired me. That Jesus is praying. Jesus is interceding for you and I before the Father in prayer. So what's our takeaway from all this? What should we go away and ponder? Well, I hope you'll go away and ponder that wonderfulness of Jesus. When you're asked about your faith and you're asked about Jesus, often we feel we've got to give a kind of neat answer. Remember, we have a Jesus who is beyond our capacity to understand. We don't have to communicate a small Jesus. He's huge and amazing and wonderful. And also, I want us to take away that Jesus is our personal, wonderful counsellor. He is there for us in the big and the small. And that's not to say you shouldn't use human counsellors or whatever else. God works through medication. He works through human counsellors. There's nothing wrong with that. But Jesus is there with you every moment of the day. And I, one of the things I want to do is before I turn to a self-help book or ask Alexa or Google it, I want to begin to turn to Jesus. So let me encourage you to open your eyes to the wonder of Jesus, particularly at Advent, to make space day to day this Advent in the run-up to Christmas to ponder your wonderful counsellor, to make time to walk with him and to talk with him and to allow him to speak into your lives. I believe that's what Jesus longs to do. Amen.